Welcome to another episode of Wellness Wednesdays, brought to you by Be Well Buzz. Today I'm going to talk about recent study finds about what and who is killing the honeybees. We seem to be in an age of discovery, but of a different kind. More and more we are finding that much of our human ingenuity is employed to control and enhance nature. The lack of foresight by past generations and current powers is reaping unforeseeable, unimaginable consequences. Who would have ever thought that spraying pesticides, herbicides and fungicides in order to secure a greater harvest would actually become a threat to life itself? We've been talking a lot lately about the ill effects of these chemicals in the human digestive system, but now scientists are tracing the poison to perhaps the most underappreciated workers in the world, our honeybees. If you do even lightest research about colony collapse disorder, or CCD, you will find out about staggering losses to the honeybee population worldwide. The buzz about Mimimageddon is growing louder as problem worsens. These days, the average consensus among beekeepers points to about an 80% die-off of honeybees across the globe. Even Albert Einstein stated, if honeybees become extinct, human society will follow in only four years. Honeybees pollinate over 130 or about three quarters of the world's food crops. Some sources say the work of bees contributes approximately 14.5 billion to U.S. economy yearly. Another recent source said it's more like 30 billion. Either way, our little buzzing friends are worth billions of dollars, and not to mention the billions of people, like you and me, that depend on them for our daily food. The culprit behind CCD has been largely a mystery, but while the result of a study released from the University of Maryland and U.S. Department of Agriculture may be shocking to some, for others, it's only a confirmation of a long-held suspicion. We can't yet explain why the entire colony sometimes fall dead all at once, but scientists are seeing at least one main reason why many are gradually falling ill and disappearing. Pesticides, herbicides, and fungicides have contaminated pollen, which is bee food. Researchers taking a close look at the pollen found various mixtures of chemical cocktails, even of wildflowers and weeds that have never been directly sprayed. The study reports, our pollen samples contain an average of nine different pesticides, ranging as high as 21 pesticides in one cranberry field. They collected pollen from some East Coast hives and fed it to healthy bees. The bees' immune system tanked, making them more susceptible to a parasite called Nosema serenae. This parasite can quickly cause the whole colony to die. Bees can die within eight days after exposure to it. The presence of one fungicide in particular made honeymakers three times more susceptible to this parasite. So should we ban that fungicide altogether and move on? Well, experts say that simply won't cut it. In 1980s, a class of insecticide chemicals called neonicotinoids were released over the food supply. And in January of this year, the European Food Safety Authority put a two-year ban on its use because of the dangers posed to bees. A few months later, these chemicals were further implicated by the American Bird Conservancy as being hazardous to birds and other wildlife. The EPA has even been sued by a coalition of beekeepers for their inadequate toxicity evaluations. But rather than simply outlawing a single pesticide and calling it quits, scientists say that it's the whole lot of chemicals that are killing our bees. Perhaps the 21 plus toxic substances found in a sample pollen are many fruits of one mindset, greed. In the interest of profit, we are trying to outdo nature. Like so many discoveries we've made about the factors that are causing health declines among all the nations, there's no one single ingredient to blame, but a mindset of greed, given birth to colonies of artificial ingredients and methods which sacrifice the substance food and life to the shallow mass production and personal profit. Bottom line is this, there's probably confirmation that our ways of factory farming and resorting to artificial means to secure a harvest is in direct conflict with the earth. We once thought sterility would protect us forever from disease, but now we see that there are many beneficial microbes that should be welcomed into our bodies. There are powerful symbiotic relationships everywhere in nature. 
we are manipulating realities that we really don't fully understand. But perhaps all is not doom and gloom. Through small individual efforts, you and I can make our own deposit on the solution. Keeping home gardens, community plots, and green rooftops will not only add beauty to your life, but save you a little money. It can also offer fresh habitat for healthy honeybees. In the meantime, keep putting the pressure on Big Pharma and buy local, organic, pesticide, and chemical-free. Thank you for tuning in in this week's Wellness Wednesday. Make sure to spread this information far and wide by liking and sharing on Facebook. So together we can make this world a better place.